In this presentation, we're going to record a cash donation or contribution into our not-for-profit organization. Get ready because here we go with Aplos. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're going to be jumping on over to Excel first to see what our objective will be. So here we are in Excel. We're on tab two in our Excel worksheet. We're going to be recording a cash donation. Now note, we're going to be recording this as a one lump sum donation, but you can imagine we have multiple uh, donations that would be of a similar format. That format being we receiving cash, cash then going up. The other side being a form of revenue account. So remember, of course, for a not-for-profit organization, uh, the donations will be basically the revenue. The only thing different between that and a for-profit organization is there's no transaction that's taking place that's trading hands here because note that uh, the cash is coming in. We're not giving the donor anything. The, what we're going to do is obviously use that money and give our services to the public in some type of way, in our case, in terms of education and community service. So if we go back on over to the right, then we can see that the cash is going to be increasing and then the contributions and this is going to be without donor restrictions will be increasing. So that, of course, means the assumption is that the donor that gave us money didn't put any restrictions on it. They just expect us to use it in accordance with what our not for profit organization is set up to do. So we're going to go back on over here in order to do this. We're on Aplos now. And we're going to go to the accounting. Uh, actually, we're going to go to the donations tab up top. Within the donations tab, we're going to hit the contributions drop down. We have the contributions within the contributions. We have uh, contributions and deposits. The typical flow, if you're going to enter the contributions at a time, would go to contributions and then the deposit of them. Although you can do a faster system putting it directly into uh, the deposit. So then we're going to add a new contribution here. So I'm going to hit the plus button, adding another contribution. And I'm going to say that this is going to be from, I'm just going to make another contact as we go. And so I'm just going to say donor two. So that's just going to be the name of our donor. Notice we're giving very minimal information here. If we just fill out the contact form in this format, you could then go uh, and, and set this up to get more information in the people's area so that you can you can populate more information than simply the name the name is what you need in order to populate the donation the minimum uh, standard to get the donation but you probably want all their contact information and so on and so forth for uh, the donor you'll recall that general is going to be our purpose if you've ever used something like an intuit or something like that the purpose is similar to the items or the service and product lines the general here is going to help us to to tell the system with this basically form document form what account is going to be hit because we set up that general item to be hitting the uh, income account uh, contributions unrestricted as well as being classified in the fund of unrestricted acknowledged or unacknowledged i'm going to keep it as unacknowledged that's kind of like the default to see if we have given acknowledge acknowledgements for the contributions that has been provided to us the date let's put the uh, january 1st again let's go january 2nd here i'm going to go back on over january 2nd and then the amount we're going to say is going to be for the 35800 i believe it was let's double check that let's double check it over here on uh no the amount is going to be the 1897 1897 so 1897 i think i was looking at the last one we're not going to have a reference id we're not going to add a note uh, we have no expenses this time that we will add it's going to be a straight cash donation we're not going to add anything for the non-tax a deductible amount or the non-tax deductible note and nothing for the soft credit contact so note when we enter this we're at, we're not going to actually enter a transaction with this until we make the actual deposit within the system that helps us to be able to group the deposits together as well so what we'll do is we're going to say uh, save and close here just to verify that there's no effect yet on the financial statements let's keep it keep track of those financials as we go i'm going to do that by going up top we're going to be right clicking on the tab up top we're going to duplicate that tab so duplicating that tab then we're going to go to the reports and open up our favorite reports that of course being the balance sheet and the income statement so let's go ahead and open up the balance sheet here so we'll open up the balance sheet there we have it and then we'll go back up top and i'm going to do this again i'm going to right click on this tab again Let's right click on the first tab. I like having the income statement like in between. I'm going to right click on that tab and duplicate that tab. It's a little picky, a little picky there. But uh, here we go to the reports. 
And then I think the income statement, which would be more useful most of the time, will actually be the income statement by fund. So let's check that one out. Also note that we have a balance sheet by fund down here too. So I just want to bring that up top. This is also something that uh, I'll put a little star next to it. This is also something that you may not see with other uh, software oftentimes. You may not, you, you know, most of the time, if you use something like class tracking and something like a QuickBooks, you'll typically have the funds uh, on, that, that will be broken out by classes, most likely, which will be on the income statement. And you don't always have that kind of tracking on the balance sheet, which you, which you might use. And it's nice that the funds that then in this system, the income statement rolls into the proper equity account and you can also allocate those funds on a, on a balance sheet you know method as well so let's just take a look at the balance sheet too so i'll open up the the balance sheet by fund i'm going to go back to the first tab right click again duplicate and then let's do the income statement so i'm going to go back to the reports again let's go back to the reports and then we're going to do the income statement by fund so let's take a look at the income statement by fund because that's going to be more fun to do by fund is fun all right Anyway, so we're going to go to the first one on the balance sheet. Then we don't really need this first balance sheet. Now let's delete the first balance sheet. Let's get rid of this thing that I really need to remove that program. And then uh, let's change the dates up top. So let's change the dates. Uh, let's bring this back to January. So we're going to say January 31st. So there we have that. Nothing's there thus far. So that we haven't recorded the transaction yet because cash would have gone up if it had been recorded. If we go here to the dates, let's say for, I'm just going to pick this year to date to make it easy. So that as long as it includes January, that's what we want instead of having a custom date field. So then if we scroll down, then we have the uh, 35,800 from our prior transaction and the expense not having recorded this transaction thus far. Everything's currently in the unrestricted section. And then I'm going to go back to our tab, our first tab. Then we can go ahead and deposit this item. Now, remember, you may uh, have multiple deposits here in, in a system like this. So, for example, you might have something where you're collecting cash donations. You're recording those cash donations into the system. Then you need to take that cash donation and go to the bank with it. So we can imagine multiple transactions with this 189.7 that we have to go to the bank and transfer. Now, this is important because whenever, remember, when you put this money into the bank, your goal is that you want it to be showing up in your system in the same grouping as it will be shown in the bank statement. Because when you want to reconcile the bank statement to your books, which is a key internal control, you would really like the amount of the deposits to be grouped in the same way. In other words, if you collected this whole thing in uh, you know, $500 increments, and then you put in a bunch of $500 increments into the system here, deposited them into the bank account as $500 increments, but deposited this amount into the the actual bank account at, at the actual bank at the 189.7 when you compare the bank account to your books you're we're gonna have to add up all the 500 dollar deposits to get to that number which can confuse things make the reconciliation difficult that's why it's really nice it's this is a nice system nice internal system here that allows us to check off multiple deposits and make that deposit in kind of a group format in the same format that it will be shown on the bank statement all right, so then let's go ahead and do that. We're going to uh, create a deposit. So I'll check this one off and we're going to create the deposit. This will actually record the transaction now. I'm going to make this one as of the second as well. So let's bring this one on back to January, January 2nd. And so there we have it. Now it's already input here. You can see that this, this is also another quick data input screen. So if you wanted to, to do this, uh, these deposits in a quick fashion and put them right into basically the bank account, then you can use this quick data input screen, which basically has the same kind of fields we saw uh, in the deposit slip. But remember, if you use this system uh, and, you, and you record a bunch of small deposits that are, and then go to the bank, you're not going to have the grouping correct. So, uh, if, if you're, if you, so you, you want to basically make sure that if you use this system, you're, you're going to deposit them in such a way that you will actually be putting that deposit into the bank so your books match the bank. But this is a quicker kind of way that you can just automatically put this in, into the system. Okay, we see the link here uh, that it's going to the purpose. So that's going to be driving our transaction. What's this going to do when we record it? Increase the checking account. Increase the revenue account. Record this to unclassified in terms of our, in terms of our funds. 
and and obviously it's going into the checking account down here so we've cho we've chosen the checking account that's our only cash account that it can uh, be going into so let's go ahead and save that and then check out our reports so notice how i, I really like having the reports open all the time for the, a lot of the uh, types of software that are online have this kind of format so you can just jump right back over to the report you got to refresh the screen i do that with a little button over here or you can highlight the entire url and hit enter and then that'll refresh so there it is it's showing up as an asset now and it's showing up in the equity section so if i go into the asset let's go into the asset here we can uh, you know click on it we got that drill down feature and that'll give us our transactions and then we can actually drill back down from this point to our source document so then i'm going to drill back down on the 1897 and that takes us to our source document here where we have the contribution transactions for batch contribution i can drill further down on that and that takes us to our actual uh, deposit here so if we scroll on down here's the actual uh, transaction there's the actual deposit so i'm going to go back i'm going to go back and see if i can get all the way back to uh the report the balance sheet report we did it so that looks good and then we have the unrestricted down here now note uh, for the, the software is customized for not-for-profit they still use the term equity which I guess different not-for-profits might use different terms like uh, net assets or net position are, the, are typically the two terms I believe that are going to be used for a not-for-profit not usually uh, equity so that's still something that we can't really change because it's part of the formats in a similar format as a for-profit type of company but note down here you have it formatted what would be the, the normal kind of uh, item you would have in there which would be unrestricted and honestly the term equity probably doesn't disturb anyone that knows how to read you know financial statements but technically it might be, you know be called net assets or a net position or something like that okay so then if we go to the first tab then then uh, we're going to go to our income statement we'll reposition that or, or reformat this and see what we have here so now we're at the uh 225 500 if we click on that 225 500 then we're going to have our detail and once again we can drill down on this further now note you can't drill down on the number you have to actually click uh over here with the account uh contribution so that's going to be our our item that we will be selecting also note the detail that's given in these transaction forms so you can go back to it we have the transaction number we have the transaction type, which is a deposit. So it's nice to see these types because that'll give you an indication of the type of form that's been used. And what you want to start to memorize and understand is when you see these types of forms, what accounts will be affected. So if you see a deposit form, you would expect this to be showing up at least in part on the income, on the balance sheet, all right, on in cash. And the other side is going somewhere, This in this case being to income, right? And then we have the contribution uh, for batch contributions and then uh, the fund here being the unrestricted all right so then let's go and they even give you the debits and credits so you if you if you don't know debits and credits that's okay because they give you the balance but I actually really like that they give you the detail uh, of the debit and credit here because that actually gives you a little bit you know a little bit more detail for it in other words, if you just use a plus and minus system and try to eliminate the debits and credits, sometimes it can get mixed up when you have like contra asset accounts on which way the thing is going. So in any case, I'm going to go back on over to uh, the income statement. We then have our net income of the 189.7. So the net income at the 189.7. If we go back on over to the balance sheet, we will, of course, I'm going to the balance sheet, see that 189.7 in the equity section or net assets section of the balance sheet. So if we go back on over to the uh, income statement, of course, you'll note there's nothing in the restricted items. We don't have any restrictions at this point, but we have that nice breakout between the unrestricted and the restricted. Uh, and we'll further break that out into, the, into their components with the use of the tags at a later time. Let's go back to the first tab now. Within the first tab, let's right click on this report, on this tab, duplicate it. And then I'm going to go to the uh, people up top. Let's go to the people and let's go to the contact list. So if we go to the contact list, then we're going to have our people here. And again, he, we added another individual, that being donor two. You could go in here and add more detail to donor two's data, uh, the contact information. We want to make sure they can get our newsletter and whatnot. And then we're going to go to the reports up top again. Let's take a look at those reports. 
and I put up top in the favorite report uh, donations by contact. So that's probably one that, that you, you in a not-for-profit may be using a lot. It's also going to be uh, down here in the donations, donation by contact. I put a little star by it because I wanted it up top and that made it like appear up in the top area, donations by contact. And note, now that I have the balance sheet by fund, I'm probably going to use that even more than the balance sheet. I'm, I'm probably going to actually remove the balance sheet, which seems awfully odd because those are our main two forms and the income statement because pretty much all the time I want to see this information by fund and it's only two columns, so I don't see that being too burdensome, so I would do that. And then I'm going to go to the don donations by contact and the donations by contact. Now we see our, our donations here, so we can easily give a, a list of those donations yeah, also note if we wanted to filter this report we can filter exam for example by contact so if we go into filter by contact and we say i want to see you know uh donor one i could start typing in donor one or donor two and i could say i want to uh, filter that one out and so and then apply that and uh that'll give us that'll give us our individual donor if we wanted to kind of customize and, and generate a report in that format as well now note another way to just get that quick information if you needed to just provide someone information is to go to that back to the people item, go to the contact list again. And then if you were to select an individual contact, so if I was to select, you know, donor two, then we can, we, you know, we could populate the, the, the detail screen here by editing the screen and populating it. And uh, those edit details being down here, edit details if you wanted to do that. And then we have the activity tab. So you could go to the activity to see the activity and once again give it that you know kind of quick information here we have the notes tab we have the files tab and then the more including lists contributions reports contact relationship dates reminders and so on and so forth we also have the quick information on the left hand side given the last gift the total givings and um, the aged uh, payables here as well so uh, that's going to be it for now let's get out of here